Hello, my absolutely beautiful Gemini friends, and welcome to your horoscope for September of 2022. Where Gemini this month, we've got a couple planets getting into pre-retrograde shadow time, really. We've got Mercury, or excuse me, Mars moving into pre-retrograde shadow time, but then we've also got your ruling planet, Mercury, in its retrograde and then sliding that retrograde back into the energy of Virgo. So another fellow mercurial ruled sign. So we've got some retrograde energy continuing to increase as we're moving through September and getting ready for October. This is our immediate signal, Gemini, that a lot of things are not going to be moving forward at warp speed. We're not just whipping and zipping forward. It's actually a really wonderful time for you to review, to bring some pleasure, bring some joy, bring some conception of new ideas to the table because your fifth house is going to be lit up as we move this energy into the Libra space. It's all also a symbol that we're going to take care of these last few things happening in the home zone as well. All right, Gemini, let's jump in and see what's going on this month. So right at the beginning of the month, as we get to the third, we're going to see Mars move into its pre-retrograde shadow time. It means Mars is going to slow down and get ready for its retrograde in October. Now it's going to slow down and I want you to take note at eight degrees of Gemini, okay? So eight degrees of your sign, you've got seven months we're gonna be working with this Mars Gemini energy. So at eight degrees of Gemini, all the way to 25 degrees of Gemini is where we're going to see the retrograde path work, but it kicks off and starts to slow down for you to focus in on your lessons right here at eight degrees. So start to take a little bit of note. What's coming up for you in terms of conflict? What are your desires that you have? strategy, conversations, maybe even negotiations that you're having. You know, what's your self-talk looking like in terms of moving your body and being energetically sound? What's going on here for you? Start to take a little bit of note of that as we travel right at the beginning of the month. Now on the 5th, we're going to see Venus move into the energy of Virgo, lighting up your fourth house space, home, family, real estate, property, our ancestors. I call home. This is our first home that we've got to work with is right here inside of our beautiful bodies, but also our reactions and our psychological makeup, right? So as Venus, our love and attracting in energy moves into Virgo, you may find yourself becoming very practical. You know, the things that you find are helpful or ways that you want to be helpful, especially in the home zone, come through the lens of practicality, right? Cleaning up, acts of service, being of service to your home. It's because Venus is an attracting in energy. If you needed to find service workers, handymen, landscapers, uh, even if you wanted to get a personal trainer or even if it's an online personal trainer in your home space or you needed to do some kind of um, cleaning up in some way, you can really love on your space and your home in this way. And I also laugh when Venus does get into the energy <laughs> of Virgo because some of the things that we can do is, you know, you find yourself helping other people with their home chores or their home situation or you're giving advice. Now, the thing to remember about Venus in Virgo is not to get to the the shadow side of it where you're being very critical. Nothing's enough. I never make enough. I don't have enough money. This isn't good enough. All of the not enough or the lack of perfection conversation really anchors towards that shadow side. But instead, it's this is the very best that it's available to be right now as I'm learning, growing, and evolving and letting this be what it can be next. But there's a lot of power in the energy of right now, okay? As we get to the ninth, we're gonna see Mercury uh, take its retrograde in the energy of Libra. So this is in your fifth house space. This is children, joy, play, conception of ideas that you're working on, true love, this is romance, self-expression. It's a very joyful, big kind of energy. But of course, this is in Libra qualities. It may have a lot to do with relationships. Now, Mercury is gonna take its retrograde at eight degrees of Libra as well. So we've got eight degrees of Gemini slowing down for some retrograde review. And we've also got eight degrees of Libra, another air sign 
in review as well. So there's a lot of rethinking the conversation, the connections, the collaborations, the partnerships, the way that you're talking to yourself and the agreements that you sign with yourself on a daily basis that is in your space. Now, Mercury is going to take this retrograde in Libra, but we're going to see it as we get to the second half of it this month, where it's going to back up into the energy of Virgo, and it'll back all the way up to the end of the retrograde to 24 degrees of Virgo, but we'll get there in just a second. Now on the 22nd, excuse me, on the 10th, we're going to have a full moon at 17 degrees of Pisces. So make sure you locate that on your chart, okay? The full moon is asking us to end something, acknowledge something, or make an adjustment, Gemini. And this is at the tip top of your chart in the 10th house space. So career, reputation, right? Because even if you're not working, you're retired, whatever that looks like, the title that we call you in public, your reputation that you carry, all of this is getting a light up and it's very Piscean. So there's a lot of questions on the table around your work or your identity or the soul level calling that you're putting out into the world as to if you're in spiritual alignment with it. What is the spiritual health, wellness, and needs that need to be realigned, acknowledged, or adjusted around the work that you're doing? Now, it's not always something negative, you know, and it doesn't have to be that, you know, you lose your job. It does not have to be that at all, but an adjustment to the way that you're doing the same job will create this lunar effect of having all of the light in the sky and having to say, okay, I needed to just look at what the purpose is of what I'm doing and am I energetically in alignment with it, right? Remember, while we're having this full moon and the moon is in Pisces and we're asking these spiritual questions, getting a nice enlightenment from the Uranus connection here, the sun is in Virgo. So Virgo is discerning for us what's happening in a day-to-day -day kind of way. What do we need to be focusing in, prioritizing in order to be in alignment with that spiritual energy and not be so exhausted in what it is that we're doing, okay? Now on the 22nd, we see the sun move out of Virgo and slide into the energy of Libra. Now this is going to put more emphasis into this fifth house space for you, so the children. But the sun is bringing light, heat, life and motivation. And the one thing I want you to be mindful of when Libra season rolls around and your fifth house gets activated, you may have relationships coming into your life or highlighting and they are literally a reflection of you. Look at this. What is the reflection, Gemini, that is shining back to you that you're like, oh, I needed to see that this way to create an interdependence instead of a codependence? Where are you rebalancing things in your life and your relationships. Now the sun also coming here, I think is a great energy for launching out a project or a product. Libra is incredibly business savvy and we don't always give that Venus ruled energy that much credit, but it's incredibly business savvy. So if you did have a project you wanted to start or you wanted to get out there, Libra is also a cardinal energy, okay? Now, as we continue on and we get to the 23rd, we're going to see that retrograde Mercury slide from Libra back into the energy of Virgo, okay? So we're going to work from 29 degrees up to 24 is how that retrograde moving backwards works. So as it slides back into this fourth house space, what do you need to finish up? What was, um, what was on your table around... Where are we? What month are we in? August 20th. <laughs> what was on your table around August 20th in your home zone that you were looking at? Because now we're going to see the rest of this Mercury retrograde come back and redo, revisit, re-edit, um, rescale things in your home, family, property, domestic zone, okay? On the 25th, we've got a new moon at just two degrees of Libra. So planting your seeds of intention, what would you would like to begin in this fifth house area? What would you like to express? What joy would you like to have in your life? What would you like to share? What journey are you sending good energy with your children on? Is there true love you'd like to pull into your life or romance or play or desire, or maybe a little sex, okay? Whatever it is, plant your seeds of intention at this new moon and allow that energy to pull in with you. Now to help amplify that goodness, on the 29th, we're gonna have Venus move into the energy of Libra where it is an domicile. So it is perfectly happy, 
perfectly comfortable to work in this area. So it is attracting in. It's literally this concept for you as you close out this month that what you're wanting in this fifth house zone, conception, joy, play, wants you to, and Venus will help to magnetize it in, magnetize the relationships, the partnerships, the balance that you need to support you on that cosmic journey to having the balance, having the beauty, having that lush start in this area that you're craving. All right, my beautiful Gemini friends, let me know in the comment section down below how this month is playing Ugh, playing and panning out for you as we travel towards the end of September. I love you a ton and I look forward to seeing you in October where we're going to do eclipses and retrograde Mars. Oh my. Bye friends. <laughs>